Welcome to another video. In this video, we're going to talk about just an introduction to how to solve logarithmic and exponential equations. Just a quick preview of what it takes when you can't find common bases. We're going to explore a lot more in future, future videos, but right now I want the idea to get in your head of how to approach solving an equation when you have logarithms and when you have exponentials. So here's the rundown. Number one thing, whenever we see an equation with logarithms or exponentials, the first thing we're gonna check is if I can make it to have common bases. With logarithms, what that's gonna mean for you is that you have a log on one side and a log on the other with the same exact base. And we can just set the insights or the arguments equal to one another. We're gonna see that in a future video. With exponentials, that means that we might have to manipulate a little bit. And we've done that before, where we say, hey, this is an exponential equation. Let's get the same base, and if we can, then the exponents are equal. We're not gonna talk about that because we've already done that in a previous video. Right now is, if you don't have common bases, what in the world do you do? So here's what we're gonna learn in this video. If you have logarithms in your equation and you don't have two of them, you just have one logarithm and a constant, what we can know is that we can take any logarithm and change it into some exponential. It's inverse, and in doing so, we're gonna solve that logarithm. So in your head, I need you really thinking, with the exception of common bases, if I see a logarithm, I'm using exponentials to solve it because that is the inverse. Just like addition is to subtraction, exponentials are to logarithms. They undo one another. And so we're gonna practice that. When we get to exponentials, with the exception of common bases, if you have an exponential, you're gonna be using logarithms to solve it. So when we see exponentials, we're gonna use a logarithm. It's inverse, and by writing an exponential in a logarithmic form, we're gonna be able to solve that exponential. Logarithms are to exponentials as subtraction is to addition. They undo one another. So let's practice that right now. So I'm gonna model this as we go through. These are gonna be very, very quick. Uh, we're just getting a feel for it, understanding that exponentials are gonna solve logarithms. And the next part of the video, logarithms are gonna solve exponentials. So let's take a look at it. Log base two of two x plus one equals three. So here's the thought process going through. Number one thing, we're gonna check if we have common bases. Now for logarithms, what that means is we need a log on one side and a log on the other. We don't have that. After that, we're gonna look for logs. And if we have a log, we're going to isolate it. So we have a log on one side, nothing else around it, and some sort of a constant on the other, which is what we have here. So we have a log base two of two x plus one equals three. Once we have that log isolated, we have our base identified, what we know is that logarithms have separated the base from the exponent. If we write this in exponential form, it'll put it back together. So if our base is two and our exponent is three, our exponential could be written as two to the third power equals two x plus one. That in general is how exponentials work. They look at a logarithm, they take the base and the exponent. That's a logarithm that's separate of those two things and it puts it back together. And notice that this is something that's pretty nice for us to solve. We can take a look at it and go, oh, well now that I have this in exponential form, I know what two to the third is. Two to the third is eight. Two x plus one, it's really easy to solve. We can subtract one and then divide by two. So x equals seven halves. As long as what you solve for does not create a negative inside your argument, you need to remember that, that our arguments have to be positive. Our domain for logarithms is strictly greater than zero. So if we ever have a solution that causes zero or a negative, when you plug it in, that's an invalid solution. Typically it happens when you have a quadratic or higher, uh, but we always would want to check that. So we check, does that make this negative? No. In fact, you can plug this in, uh, two times seven halves is seven, seven plus one is eight, and two to the third power would give you eight. That's exactly true, and that's exactly what this is solved for. That's what we're gonna do to solve logarithms. You check for common basis. That takes two logarithms. If you don't have that, you're gonna need to isolate your log. We've got that. One log, one side, constant. And then use an exponential notation to solve that. It's gonna be 
pretty easy to solve in most of these cases. Let's move on to another one. So we have another logarithm. Uh, we check for common bases. I don't have two logs, I have one log. There's one log on one side and a constant on the other. Exponential notation will solve your logarithm. The exponential is an inverse of some logarithm. And so we're gonna use that inverse. Identify your base. So our base here is three. Our exponent is on the other side. A logarithm has stripped away the exponent and separated on different sides of the equation. So our base for an exponential is three, the exponent is two, and that's gonna equal x squared plus one. This is the exponential notation of the inverse of that particular logarithm, the same base and the same exponent. Now we're gonna solve for x. So notice that we do sometimes have to rely on some techniques that we've had. So when you set up your exponential, you might have a quadratic. You might have to factor this. In this case, we're just gonna use the square root method because we can isolate that power too. But you might have to factor it. You might have to do quadratic formula for it. You have to do lots of things to solve this. Here's the main point. The only thing I'm really trying to teach you in this video is that in order to solve a logarithm, you're going to have to put it in exponential form. Also, this video is very basic. We have some other techniques with exponentials that I'm gonna show you later, but right now it's just the idea I need to just pound in your head that exponentials are what it takes to solve logarithms. When we get to exponentials, it's gonna be logarithms are what it takes to solve exponentials because they're inverses of one another. So solving this, we know that three squared is nine. If we subtract one and we take a square root, Remembering that when you take a square root, you need to have a plus and minus. We end up getting two solutions. We get plus and minus the square root of eight. Because eight is four times two, the square root of four is two, and it leaves us a square root of two. That's two root two and negative two root two. Now, the common question is, wait a minute, I thought you couldn't plug in negatives into a logarithm. Well, you can't plug in values that make the inside of your logarithm negative. But look at our, our argument here. Look at this x squared plus one. There's nothing that you can plug in here that's gonna cause that to be negative. You can plug in positive numbers. Something squared plus one is gonna be positive. You can plug in negative numbers. Something negative squared plus one is going to be positive. These are both valid solutions for you because they don't make the inside of your logarithm negative. It's very common for students to look at this and go, oh, I can't have negatives. It's really easy to do that, but that's not the idea. The idea is you can't plug in values that make the inside of that, that logarithm negative. Neither of these actually do that. Therefore, they're both valid solutions. Okay, moving on, do you remember that if I have a logarithm and I've checked for both sides, both, sorry, I've checked for common bases and I don't have them, I just have one logarithm and it's isolated. Do you remember that when you have an LN, it stands for a logarithm, but it has a certain base. So that base would be E. LN stands for the logarithm of the natural number. So that says it's an implied base of E here. So this is a logarithmic, logarithmic equation. I check for common bases, but I only have one logarithm. I don't have two. That's what you would need for common bases to work. I have my logarithm isolated. There's nothing being added, subtracted, or multiplied. It's very basic here. What we do when we see this, and we go, okay, we've got a logarithm without common bases. You're going to need to get an exponential from that. So when we look at it, we go, all right, our base is our base is e. Our exponent is eight. Remember, a logarithm, all of them, have separated the base from the exponent. Put them on different sides of your equation. So we're going to put it back together in something called exponential notation. So our base is e. Our exponent is eight. And that's gonna to equal the to argument negative two x plus one. Looks a little weird, but we can certainly solve this. If we solve for x, go through the same exact steps that you would with any other equation. If that's our variable, remember that's a number, that's like 2.7 ish. Goes forever, it's transcendental. You can't really get to the end of it, but it is a number, it's sort of like pi. If we're solving for x, you're just gonna subtract one, and then we're gonna divide by negative two. Do exactly the same thing here, but don't approximate e to the eighth. What we want is something called an exact solution. So an exact solution hasn't used your calculator to say, well, e is about this, therefore e to the eighth is about this, and then we subtract one, it's about this, divide by negative two, it's about this. That's, a, that's an approximation. 
And those are valid sometimes when they ask you for it. But if you need an exact solution, this is the process you go through. Subtract one from both sides. Notice it's not subtracting from the exponent, it's subtracting from e to the eighth. And then we would divide by negative two. Now we typically don't like to see negatives on the denominator, so we can move that out front, that's appropriate. I don't like to see them on the denominator, move them out front, or you can run it through the numerator as well. So negative e to the eighth and then plus one, or we can reverse that. One of these two, two solutions is really what you should end with. Something with a negative e to the eighth minus one over two, or one minus e to the eighth, just distributing that negative through your numerator over two. This is what's called an exact solution. We have not approximated. Now, if you want to approximate, what you can do on your calculator is put parentheses, plug in one minus e to the eighth, end that parentheses, because you need to tell the calculator that that's my numerator, and then divide by two. It'll give you a decimal approximation. And that's sometimes useful for us, but if you're asked for exact, that's what we do. Also, uh, when we're doing math and we need an approximation, don't approximate until you get here. So what I don't want to see, I don't want to see you plugging in 2.7 or e, and then getting e to the eighth and writing down a decimal, and then subtracting one and writing down a decimal, then dividing by negative two and writing down a decimal. You're starting to round your approximations, and if we approximate approximations, they get more and more error in them. It's not really appropriate to do, so don't do that. Now, it seems kind of awkward to check, but you still could check this answer. If you plug this in, and you plugged it in right there, well, it's really weird, but think about how this would take the place of x. Negative two, Oh, and times something over two, those twos would cancel. That negative would distribute here and give you negative one plus e to the eighth. Negative one plus one would give you zero. You would end with e to the eighth. Now, wait a minute. Ln of e to the eighth. We're going to see this right here. But whenever you have an exponential composed on a logarithm or a logarithm composed on an exponential, we're going to see it in the properties of logarithms in a very nice video. These things cancel. This right here says this is going to give you eight. So in other words, it says e raised to what power gives you e to the eighth? Well, e to the eighth power would give you e to the eighth. Oh, hey, look, it's eight. It makes sense. It actually works. So that we can check and it becomes a little more awkward. What you can't do, you can't check an approximation. It's not going to work out because you just approximated the decimal, which is another reason why we want to leave it in exact, uh, exact answer form. So moving on here, a couple of special cases where you don't necessarily need to write an exponential, but you still can. So I want to show you this. So we check. Do I have two logarithms where I can make common bases? No, not really. What am I going to need? I'm going to need an exponential, but I'm going to need a logarithm isolated. And we, we have that right here. The base of this particular logarithm is e. So notice what happened. It's just what we talked about. If this has a base of e, which we never really write, Here's what is actually going to happen once we learn about the properties of logarithms. You have now composed an exponential onto a logarithm. You've composed two inverses. The reason why we talked about compositions and inverses is so that you would learn that when I compose two inverses, they cancel. And you get x. The x here in this case is 2x. It's your exponent. So what's going to happen? I'm going to show you this. I'll prove this to you with the exponential notation. What's going to happen? You're going to end up going, ah, that's going to be 2x equals 8. Your solution is going to be 4. Now, can we see it a different way? Sure. If you understand that that base is e and that this is a logarithm, it's isolated, can you write it in exponential form? Well, well yeah, we can. Our base is e. Our exponent is 8. So base to the exponent equals our argument. This is what happens every time you compose an exponential onto a logarithm with the same base. This is the key, the same base. What will happen is that your exponential that you create will have the same base. You can see it right here. Same base means same base. That's why it's so trivial. That's why it says, well, yeah, you can just go 2x equals 8 because those things cancel out. Because these e's practically cancel out. You know, if my bases are the same, then my exponents have to be equal. And sure enough, 
I get just four. That's going to happen every single time. You compose an exponential with a logarithm. The bases will, if the bases match, then the bases will cancel and you're going to get the exponents equal. And that's exactly what we have. Keep this in mind. This is a big deal. This is an exponent, right? But this is also some exponent of an exponential. That's what logarithms have done. They separated the base from the exponent. Our exponents will get set equal if our bases are the same. That's the reason why uh, these inverses undo each other. It's because of that. They have the same base. They're going to undo each other. Kind of cool. All right. Last one's also a special case. I'm going to show this to you. Uh, you'll hopefully understand the same concept that you're seeing here with just a, a slightly different base. And then I'll show you the exponential notation. So if you were to think of log base 6 of 36 equals 5x plus 4, you, you're noticing right after hopefully right, right away, that your variables are here. Wait a minute. Couldn't you just subtract 4 and divide by 5? Yeah, you could. There's no variable over here, which means this is already a constant. In fact, it's a constant that we can simplify. Think about this. 6 raised to what power will give you 36? 2. This stands for Two, I promise you, no matter what you do, you're going to end with 5x plus 4 equals 2. A couple ways you can see that. Well, what if we thought about it? As log base 6 of 6 squared. 6 squared is still 36. Oh, but what I've done is the same thing I've done here. I've written this as an exponential and a logarithm with the same base. Well, what's going to happen with that? The bases will cancel. You will end up getting 2 equals 5x plus 4. That's possible to do, and we can show it just this way. Uh, we, can, uh, we can say, hey, that's going to cancel. You get 2 equals 5x plus 4, or if you need the exponential. We can think of this as if this is a logarithm, it's isolated. It has a base of 6. I know that if I were to write this in exponential form, that's my base. That's my exponent that's been separated. So writing this back in exponential form would say base of 6 to an exponent of 5x plus 4 must equal whatever's here in the argument, 6 squared. And now it's really, really clear that if your bases are the same here, they're going to be the same in your exponential. If your bases are the same here, you're going to set your exponents equal. If your base is the same here, you're going to set your exponents equal. This models a little more concisely what this is saying to you. It's just saying you compose a function with its inverse, it's going to cancel out. Same basis, it's going to cancel out. So if we have those bases the same, the exponents also have to be equal. And then we can solve this as exactly what we thought would happen. If we subtract 2, so sorry, subtract 4. And we divide by 5. We get x equals negative 2 fifths. Negative 2 fifths times 5 give you negative 2. Plus 4 will give you 2. And sure enough, 6 to the second power is 36. We can check our work on that. I hope that makes sense to you. I hope you're seeing the necessity of writing a lot of these in exponential form. That's how we solve logarithms in general. Yes, there are some shortcuts if we can find common bases somehow. That's true. We can simplify this a little bit easier. But without that, you are going to need an exponential for logarithms in general. We'll come back. We'll talk about exponentials and then we'll be done. Okay, I guess I lied a little bit. I want to do one more logarithm before we jump into these exponentials. Sometimes you get a little bit of awkwardness, like, hey, can you solve for a base that would make this logarithm true? And it's, it's not that bad. Just remember that with your exponentials, you check your common bases. I do not have that because I don't have two logarithms. Um, what I do is I have one logarithm isolated equal to a constant. This is the setup for solving with an exponential. We look at this and say, can I write this as an exponential? Well, identify what your base is. Our base is x. Identify what your exponent is, in this case, 3, and that's going to be equal to your argument. Um, when you solve these, just be careful. Remember that your argument has to be positive. Your domain for logarithm is positive numbers. So whatever you plug in must keep that or make that positive, but your base also has to be positive. It can be fractions. That's okay, but it has to be positive. So if you had a square root here and not a cube root, when we took a plus and minus, you would have to omit any negatives. Cube root's fine. Uh, you can 
You can take this and take a cube root and not get any negatives here, but you'd have to watch that. Just remember your bases can't be negative. So take a cube root of both sides. Cube root of one is one and of eight is two. So the base that makes this work is one half. And sure enough, one half to the third power is one eighth. That's what this would say. Again, last time, just be careful that you don't allow any bases to be negative. So this works. Um, you still write this as exponentials. That's how logarithms are solved in general is with its inverse of an exponential. Now let's move on and solve some exponentials. So the same logic applies. It's just that we're going backwards. You see, logarithms and exponentials are inverses of one another. It means that it takes one to solve the other. So we would check for common bases. And here's what I mean by that. You would look at this and say, can I write this as this base? If, that, if you can, then you do it because it's a little bit nicer. You don't have to use any logarithms. You'll get um, a more easy to understand solution. But if we don't have that, then we're going to have to find a logarithm. And we're going to have to use that to solve our exponential. So in each of these cases, 7 and 8, you can't find a common base. 10 is your base, not 8 and not 80. 10 and 3, you can't find a common base. E and 5, definitely no common base. E and 7, no common bases. So we would check that first, though. Once we've determined there are there's no way to write these exponentials as a common base, we're going to have to use a logarithmic form to solve the exponential. It's not too bad. When we get into a, a little bit more detail, I'm going to give you at least three, possibly if I feel like it, four different ways to solve exponentials with logarithms. So we've checked common bases, and we don't have any common bases in any of these problems. And what I just I just need you to know that if you do not have common bases with exponentials, it is going to take logarithms to solve them. We're going to isolate the exponential. What that means is get the base raised to an exponent by itself, and then we're going to solve. Um, as I was saying a little earlier, I will take, teach you some other techniques when these become a little more difficult, like what do you do if you have two exponentials? Well, then writing this as one logarithm is not going to work. And so I'm going to show you that in another video. This is very basic, just the introduction of, hey, if you have exponentials, check for common bases. If not, write them as a logarithm, and then we can solve that. So let's practice that here. So this is an exponential. It's got a base of 7. It's got an exponent of 2x plus 5. Uh, what a logarithm does, a logarithm takes that exponential and breaks it apart. It takes the base and says, this is the base of some logarithm, some inverse function of an exponential, and then it's going to be equal to your exponent. So we can take this and say, all right, so 7 to the 2x plus 5 equals 8 can be written as some inverse function, a logarithm, with the same base equal to the same exponent, but just separated. It just says the same thing a little bit weird. It says 7 to the 2x plus 5 equals 8, and it says in order to get from 7 to 8, you need an exponent of 2x plus 5. Now, this allows us to solve for that variable x. Don't try to figure this out unless you have some sort of common base idea. Um, if you do, then you can, but in general, you wouldn't need a, a logarithm to do that. It would show up right here that you can get common bases. Just leave this. This is going to be what's called exact answer. If you uh, if you approximate this on a calculator, yeah, we can get something out of it, but it's you're going to lose a lot of the um, the exactness of it. It'll just be an approximation. So when we solve for x, a couple features to understand. When we subtract five. It is really important to not actually subtract the argument of your logarithm minus 5. This is inside a logarithm, and this is not. In order to get inside the logarithm, you need properties of logs to do that, and there's really only four of them. Uh, so we cannot just subtract even though we want to. It's best to put a parenthesis around that argument almost all the time. I can only think of a couple cases where you wouldn't want to do it. And you, you can't really overuse the parentheses here with this logarithm. It's going to show you this is log base 7 of 8, and then you subtract 5. It is not log base 7 of 8 minus 5. That's not appropriate. You can't do that. Lastly, if we divide by 2, the whole entire expression is divided by 2. This, even though it's awkward, that is an exact solution, and it's also a constant. This stands for one number. It just has a weird logarithm in it. Your calculator will approximate this if you have the ability to plug in a base of 7. 
A lot of calculators don't. Most Texas Instruments don't do that. They either have a log base 10 or a log base E. That's the log and the LN on your calculator. Some of them do have, um, have that base where you can plug it in, but a lot of the ones I've seen don't have that. So this is an exact solution for that exponential and we had to have logarithms to do it. Let's move on to this guy. So when we move on and we take a look at 5e to the point 2x equals 7, there's a lot going on, but at its root, at its heart, it's an exponential. Now, can you get a common base? Well, the base here is e and the base here is 7. There's no way to make a 7 into an e, so we're going to need a logarithm to undo this exponential. When you look at an exponential and you don't have common bases and you need a logarithm to solve it, you need to get that exponential isolated. What that means is get everything that's been added and subtracted and multiplied from that base to an exponent. Get that away. So we're going to have to divide by 5 here. This is how an exponential should look before you start using logarithms. Nothing added, nothing subtracted, nothing multiplied, just like this. Now what we're going to do is say, because I can write this as a logarithm, we're going to identify the base, the exponent, and let the logarithm separate those things. Our base here is e, and our exponent is 0.2x. The argument of our logarithm is going to be 7 fifths. So with a base of e, we'd say this can be written as a logarithm, with a base of e. I know this incorrect notation, we're not going to use it. I'm just showing you how this works. That's going to separate our exponent. So here's our base and our exponent written as a logarithm, and this will equal 7 fifths. I'm going to keep this in parentheses because that is appropriate to do. We're showing that this fraction is inside the logarithm. That's different than having a log of 7 over 5. We don't want to have that unless that's actually what the, the problem is representing. The last thing I wanted to tell you about this before we divide by 0.2 is that log base e is always written as a natural log, ln. So when you see this, we really should be going, oh, that's, oh, this is going to be a logarithm of the base of e. I would normally just go straight to the ln. So this is log base e, so I've separated my base in a logarithm equal to my exponent, and then put the 7 fifths inside that natural log. And then when we divide by 0.2, the reason why we want to put that fraction in parentheses is so you don't get confused on where you're dividing by 0.2. You're dividing this entire thing by 0.2. We can do a couple things to modify the look of that, uh, like multiply by 10 over 10 if you want to, to get rid of that decimal, that's, that's appropriate, you can do that. Uh, I wouldn't say it's super necessary, but sometimes you're required to do it. So multiply by 10 over 10, you get 10 ln of 7 fifths over 2, or you can reduce that, 5 ln 7 fifths. Mm, so that might look a little bit nicer. You could do something a little simpler, I suppose. I kind of think I made that as hard as humanly possible. If you think about that as 1, 1 divided by 0.2, 1 divided by 0.2 is 5. 0.2 goes into 1 five times. So you could do that as well. But this is a nicer look than, than that is. So I hope that's making sense. I hope you're seeing that, hey, exponential is going to require a logarithm. There's another way to solve that besides using a logarithm with a base of e. There's a couple ways we can get to that point, but a logarithm is necessary to solve exponentials if you do not have common bases. Let's move on to the last two. At this point, I'm hoping that you could solve this on your own. Can you see that's a base of 10? That's a, this is three, there's no way to make this as a base of 10. Can you see that with this exponential, without common bases, I'm gonna need a logarithm. Can you also see that that logarithm is gonna be a common log? It's gonna have a base of 10 in it, but I need to get that eight away before I write this in logarithmic notation. So I'm gonna to have to divide both sides by eight. This is not 80. You, you're breaking order operations if we do that. Order operations say you have to deal with the exponent before you start multiplying. If you start multiplying here, you are really messing up that exponent. We don't want to do that. So we're going to have to divide both sides by 8.
Now that's how we like to see an exponential before we make it into logarithm. We got a base, we know it's 10. All by itself, nothing added, subtracted, or multiplied onto that exponential. This is okay because it's in the exponent, but what we mean is multiplication here or added, subtracted somewhere outside of that, that base to an exponent idea. Now that we know a logarithm is gonna be necessary for us, if we have a base of 10, remember that a, a log with a base of 10 equal to the exponent of 2x minus 7, that log should be written just log. If we write log with no base, it's implied that that base is 10. So I have a base of 10, an exponent of 2x minus 7, and a logarithm separates those. I'm going to make sure that my argument is in parentheses. That's a really good form to do. That way you don't accidentally add, subtract, multiply, divide anything inside of that without meaning to by some sort of property of logarithms. And then we solve for x because this is actually a constant. This says 10 to what power gives me 3 eighths? That is a number. It represents an exponent, but I can solve by adding 7 and dividing by 2. Where we add 7, is after that parentheses. And where we divide by two is that entire expression. So divide the entire log of 3 eighths, we know it's a base of 10, plus seven and all divided by two. That's as good as we can get for what's called an exact solution. If you wanted to approximate, your calculator will do this. Just press the log button on your calculator. That is a log base 10. And sure enough, it has parentheses there, doesn't it? So when you press it, it goes log, parentheses, plug in 3 eighths, and parentheses, add 7. Now, if you do it correctly, you might want to do your numerator and parentheses first. So parentheses, log, 3 eighths, close the first parentheses, plus 7, close the second parentheses, and that will have the numerator for you, and then divide by 2. And that'll give you an approximation for what this number represents. Okay, last one. You really need to do it on your own. Um, it's an exponential for sure. I'm going to kind of just scream through this thing. Um, it's an exponential without common bases. If you have that, a logarithm is necessary, but you have to isolate your exponential first. So when we divide by 4, we can easily see that that exponential is isolated. This is certainly no, not a common base. We're going to write this in logarithmic notation. So this exponential has a base of e. I'm going to need a logarithm with a base of e. This exponential has an exponent of x plus 1. Logarithms separate the base in the form of a logarithm from the exponential. And uses the argument of that logarithm, whatever this exponential is equal to. After that, we can solve for the variable and solve our exponential. So if we subtract 1, we're done. That's what's called an exact solution. Your calculator will also approximate this, which is why I wanted to give you these two, to show you that your calculator, that button that says log on it, represents a common log. That's what this is. That ln represents a log with a base of e. They're very, very, very common um, in our, our math going on in the future. We get so many lns. So you, you can approximate that by pressing ln, and you're going to see the parentheses. Put 5 fourths, close the parentheses, subtract 1, and it'll give you a decimal approximation for that exact solution. I hope this video has made sense. I hope that you're understanding, like, man, we, we would we'd certainly go through this process every time. With logarithms, if you've got two logarithms of the same base, it becomes pretty easy. You set your, your insides equal. We're going to see that a little bit. If you have two exponentials and you can write the same base, we've already done that. We modeled it with a couple examples a little bit earlier. You set your exponents equal, they're pretty easy to solve. But without those two very special cases, it is going to require you to use an exponential to solve logarithms. You just take your logarithm, isolate it, and then use an exponential to represent the situation. Put your exponent and your base back together and equal it to your argument. It'll solve very nicely. If you have an exponential, you're going to need a logarithm. There's a few ways I can show you how to get there, but in general, you isolate your exponential and use a logarithm somehow to represent the situation. In this case, we go directly to our, our logarithms by taking the base 
and separating the exponent and solving. So I hope the video has made sense. I'm going to see you next time for when we start talking about the properties of logarithms, just an overview, overview of what they are, then we'll start combining logs, we'll expand logs, and then we'll be ready to solve some exponential and logarithmic equations in general. So I'll see you for those videos in just a bit.